gonna ruin everyone's childhood. Well, I know about this one. Because clownfish, they change from female to male or male to female depending on what um, the clownfish family needs. So, there you go. This is why Nemo's dad was so obsessed with finding Nemo. Because uh, he lost his wife and Nemo is the only remaining one. Time to ruin your childhood. Disney, yeah, I gotta explain this. So the reason Nemo's an only child and can't celebrate Mother's Day outside of a graveyard is because a barracuda came and nearly clapped his entire bloodline. One problem mm -hmm. though, barracuda, barracuda don't eat clownfish, but you know who does? According to extensive research, Google, clownfish are known cannibals that will spawn kill- It's not about the, the swapping of the gender. It's about cannibalism. Oh no, barracuda don't eat clownfish. Holy shit. It was... Uh, it was the guy. It was Nemo's dad who, who ate everything. And the mama died because the mama was protecting the, the eggs. Oh my god, dude. Oh no. Oh no. I think the dad ate everything. Wrong. And the mama was protecting the eggs. ...and eat their own young. Oh, but that's not all. In clownfish society, the females are bigger, stronger, and more dominant than the guys. So if Marlin's wife went on a murking spree, I'm talking full cannibal lector, he would have been too weak to stop her. So what if his oh. wife Casey Anthony- Man, I use that joke a lot. It's the other way what around. What if his wife squad wiped his family and then he was so traumatized that he blamed an imaginary barracuda for the mass genocide of his children? Oh, it's the other way around. It's the mama who ate everything because the mama is stronger. Oh my god, it's even worse. No. Oh no, it's even worse. Sheesh! Why am I watching this? Such a good twist! <laughs> oh my god, why do I know this? Why, why do I need to know this uh, animal facts? And what if as a coping mechanism, he pretended that he was able to save one, which he named Nemo. A name yeah. that literally means no. It was just a coping it actually mechanism. Makes sense. makes sense, because if his wife was actually killed in front of him, according to clownfish rules, he would turn into a female to replace her. That could explain his severe trust issues after yes, the love of his life and his entire family. Disney, you have 24 hours to respond, or I'm just going to assume the worst. Dark facts about finding Nemo. Bro. Oh my god, he was just coping the whole time. It was not a barracuda. I would believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Hello, Unit Mia. We're ruining our childhood. Because apparently clownfish are cannibals and they eat their babies. Oh no, it was not the barracuda, dude. Nemo would have suffered a brutal death once he got flushed. As a saltwater fish, his body would be used to pulling in water. But in a sewer plant with fresh water, that water would just get forced into his body. Basically, he'd get internally waterboarded until he died a painful, water-intoxicated oh, death. Oh, shit. Finding Nemo convinced millions of dumb kids that they could flush their fish back into the ocean. What they no. really did was commit unintentional homicide because their fish would get eviscerated by sewer treatment machines. If you were one of those kids, you're a murderer. When Bruce cries about never meeting his father, there's truth in that. No. Some female sharks will give it up to so many guys that one litter of shark pups can have five dads. Even if his father didn't dip like a five future dads. pro athlete, Bruce would have no way of knowing who his real dad was because his mother was for the trenches. If you rewatch Finding Nemo, you'll realize that Nigel the Pelican last saw Nemo seemingly dead in the fish bag. This scene is the last time we see him, so there's a good chance he went the rest of his life thinking Nemo got killed in front of him, and he probably blames himself for it. Oh since my all God, clownfish are born dying. male, Marlon would became the dominant female once his wife died, and since there were no other clownfish around, he would have done something to Nemo that no amount of fish therapy would ever heal. Dark oh, that that dad is gonna be the dominant uh, one, but the dad is gonna be female. It's not Nemo who's gonna be female; it's the dad. Nemo's gonna be traumatized for life if Nemo actually is real. What if Nemo is just part of the coping mechanism as well? Nemo is now real. I don't know, man. I don't know what to think. <laughs> I don't know what to think anymore. Nemo, you ruined everything. Oh. Finding Nemo facts that you will unfollow me for. Nemo was more likely to get cannibalized by his own father than eaten by a barracuda. Barracuda don't eat clownfish or their eggs, but you know who does? Nemo's biggest op wouldn't be a yeah, cuda that's what you said earlier. Blood. Since a whale's respiratory and digestive tracts aren't connected like a human's, it wouldn't have been able to shoot them out his blowhole. Instead, they would have been forced into one of its four stomachs where they would have been dissolved alive by the acid. Oh my god, but they could have survived that, that the one. The moment they decided to just keep swimming to the bottom of the ocean would be the moment we saw credits. Anglerfish live more than 6,000 feet underwater. At more than a mile underwater, they'd be under more pressure than a firstborn with immigrant parents. In fact, that much pressure would crush them and force their organs <laughs> oh out of their mouth. Oh my god. Not a Disney oh. way to die.
Dory would have had a caudal spine that could severely injure people or even Marlin if she forgot to be careful. I mean, not like she forgets a whole lot anyway. Dory could fade you because those spines could cause deep wounds that result in swelling, oh. discoloration, and infections. Dory's On top dangerous. of that, she'd be toxic enough to poison people, although I've heard people say the same thing about a voice actor. Okay, fair enough. I should probably explain this. As a clownfish, Nemo would fish be a saltwater drown, yeah. fish, That's true. and water moves from higher concentration to lower concentration. Stay with me, I, I swear to Tom Brady this is going to make sense. So a fish surrounded by salt water means there's a high concentration of water inside the fish. So high to low, water would leave the fish. So to avoid losing water and joining his mother in the afterlife, Nemo would constantly be taking water in while his kidneys pumped the salt out. Now if you put Nemo in fresh water, the opposite happens. In fresh water, there would now be a higher concentration of water outside of Nemo's body. So high to low, oh, water would get pushed no. into Nemo's cells. But since Nemo spent his entire life in the ocean, he'd be used to swallowing water the way an alcoholic stepfather swallows Budweiser. So Nemo would become overhydrated, his cells would fill oh with water, and he would be dead before the sequel. He's so no fish drown. don't really drown, but they can die of water intoxication, and it's not a good way to water? get series finale. Since I ruined this movie for a lot of people, here's facts Finding Nemo got right. Marlin would probably survive the jellyfish because as a clownfish, he's covered in mucus that makes him resistant to sea anemones oh. and homicidal smuckers fish. Also, the scene where he tells Nemo to brush against the anemone before school is accurate. They brush to build immunity and get the sea anemone used to their presence. Oh, if they didn't do this, the sea anemone would sting them every time they entered, which they'd the survive, but it'd be annoying. Anemone. The East Australian current is real, and every summer, sea turtles use it to travel from the Great Barrier Reef to Sydney. Females will use it to return to the same beach year after year to lay eggs. Also, Crush was not capping about his age. There it's real. It's real. East Australian current. It's real. It's a highway. There's a highway under the water. Oh my god, that's pretty cool. That's dope. I wonder if a clownfish would survive the East Australian current, though. Maybe. Use it to travel from the Great Barrier Reef to Sydney. Females will use it to return to the same beach year after year to lay eggs. Also, Crush was not capping about his age. There are documented cases of sea turtles living to a century and a half, and one allegedly survived 400 yeah, trips old. around the sun. When Bruce relapses like a junkie for nose powder, his eyes turn black like a demon guppy. Shark eyes actually turn white when they're about to put someone on the news because they roll their eyes back to protect oh. themselves. In the beginning, Coral Damn, defends her eggs against scary. a barracuda while Marlin begs her to come inside. In Clownfish society, females are tougher and more dominant, so it makes sense that she'd be the one more likely to defend them. Her mistake was that not only are barracuda she one of the fastest her. fish, they respond to motion, so her darting towards the eggs kept her out of the sequel. Lion King were scientifically accurate, it would just be case after case. Oh, this time we're gonna ruin Lion King for everyone. Okay, okay. What if lion, lions and Lion King acted like real lions? Isn't there? um a live action lion king thingy well it's not really live action it's just more realistic they didn't really train real lions to act so if you think about it it's not really live action huh but anyway you know what i mean it's like live action lion king really real realistic lions hmm. First of all, darker manes are more desirable in lion society, so Scar should have been king to begin with. Oh, Next, darker when a manes are more desirable. Leader, the first huh? thing he does oh. is murder all the children from his previous successor, meaning Scar would have personally aborted Simba and Nala. Which brings me to my next point. Mufasa was the alpha lion, meaning any cubs we saw were fathered by him. Especially since we never see any other adult male lions. <gasps> so yeah, Simba and Nala were half-siblings. Oh, oh no! <laughs> of course! Oh my god! Mufasa is the alpha, that means... All the women belong to him, so that means, oh my god, why, Disney, why you do this? <laughs> Bruh. Not distant, twice removed cousins. Not stuck in the dryer They're not step cousins. Siblings. I'm talking full on West Virginia family reunion blood siblings. Oh this my god. This a case and a half. But before he hakuna her Tadas, Nala would have killed Simba hakuna right here. Hakuna Remember, oh, Nala was no. starving and was fighting over what was a limited resource. Not this kind of starving, but for food. And when lions are hungry enough, they'll reach a state of psychosis where they'll do literally anything Nala for food, even cannibalizing Simba cubs. That and the fact that Simba had zero fighting experience means Nala would have folded him like a backyard lawn chair. He also would have lost his scar because, again, no fighting experience. That's even true, if Simba he has won, no experience. Simba was gone for at least three years. Meaning Simba would murder any child Scar had in this time. I want to know what happened to Mufasa's body. Technically, the answer is in the movie, so watch this. Oh my god, the saddest the scene ever. Birds like the vulture and marabou stork would have eaten his dead body. But there's That's a catch. True. Vultures have really weak beaks and feet, so they would have had a way for an animal to tear them apart to make it easier for them. The question is, who got to his body first? Hyena? These are the primary suspects. Uh, hyenas and lions dogs? kill each other hyenas, out of competition, yeah. not for food. Lions don't like the taste of hyena meat and probably vice versa, so safe to say they probably didn't eat Mufasa. African wild dogs are such efficient hunters that they oh, don't have hyena, to resort to scavenging, really. so they're out. Jackals are notorious scavengers, but Shall again, they Simba. wouldn't have found the taste oh, of lion no. meat appealing, so they wouldn't have done it either. Here's where I'm gonna mess you up. 
worms, maggots, and corpse beetles would have gotten to his body first. Likely oh, the same the bugs that Simba ate would have been the ones that defiled his father's carcass. Oh, they would have oh created God. openings that would have made it easier for these guys to finish the job. And since guys like the Lamigir specialize in eating bones after a few days, there'd be nothing left. It wasn't Scar or the hyenas, it was actually vultures and bugs. Send this to a friend to ruin their childhood. I'm actually hoping I get a comment like that because I really want to talk about it. So we all can agree that Lion King was based off the Shakespeare play Hamlet. I do not remember a letter, oh, but I do know there's a scene where he holds a skull. In Hamlet, the skull belonged to your King Hamlet's jester. So if Scar holding a skull is a reference to this, we can assume that it was one of his jesters that he probably got tired of and killed. Makes sense because that skull is too small to be a lion's, but it's actually perfect baboon size. Oh, so if we put baboon. the pieces together... Maybe Scar had a baboon as a jester, got tired of his nonsense, cancelled him, and now keeps his sun skull as an R-rated keepsake. That would explain why he now forces Zazu to entertain him, because the old entertainment guy is now dead. And again, since Lion King is based off Hamlet, this actually makes oh more sense God. than Scar keeping the skull of his murdered brother. Or maybe I'm just overanalyzing a kid's movie from 1994 because I honestly have nothing better to do. But I like the first one, so I'm going with that. Oh my god, what did I just watch? <laughs> Holy this shit. Ending song. Ending song, this is the ending song.